Hi, it's Chris from Slidewheel Racing here again. Uh, one next installment of the Buick Enclave uh, teardown and rebuild of the, the uh, engine and now the transmission. I'm going to try to attempt to change the 3.5 reverse wave plate on my own now that I have the engine out of the car. So let's take a look. Uh, supposedly this job, the reason I'm videoing it is because supposedly this job can be done with the whole engine in the car. And so for all of you at home that want to try to change your wave plate, this will help you understand what's inside. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it's not as bad um, as it sounds. So what, we've, what we have to do is we have to take off this part of the engine uh, transaxle frame mount. So this is a part of the mount. This is the, the mount itself. This is what attaches the mount back to the transa transaxle. So we have to take this off and take this out of the way so that we can take this cover off. And behind this cover is the set of clutches that will let us change the 3.5 reverse wave plate. Uh, and we may also be able to change one other one other wave plate without splitting the cases uh, based on what I've seen. And I apologize if any transmission guys are watching this and I, I sound like an idiot. <clears throat> uh, the kit that I bought is this kit right here. Part number 24269587. And it's a seal kit and it comes with all of the things that you need. Now, in reality, probably only need $15 worth of parts from this kit. Uh, most of the stuff we I'm not going to use. Um, but you can see it does come with three different new wave plates. Uh, actually, four, four different new wave plates. And so uh, at least the reverse, the 3.5. Reverse one is the one we're going to change, which is this one. And then it comes with all the seals you need. Well, I'm not going to tear into the rest of the transmission. Some of these things you uh, you need to split the cases to replace, such as the filter. So most of this will go unused. Um, and after I'm all done, I'll, I'll be able to post what stuff I actually used. And uh, you, anybody else who does this won't need to buy all the different parts. But at least by buying this kit, you know you're getting the latest pieces. So <clears throat> what I've done so that we can take that mount off and not have everything fall down is I've supported the trans transmission, the transaxle uh, directly to the floor. You can see there's some some blocks that holding that up. So when I take this all off the frame might want to drop a little bit but everything will be uh, should be okay. Uh, if you're doing this in the car obviously you have to do the same thing. Um, you have the car up on your jack stands, but you'll need to support the transmission separately uh, so that it doesn't fall down when you pull them out. So I'll set up the camera on the tripod and get to work. Before I got started, I already drained the fluid, but since uh, I'm sure there's still going to be some left in there and all the cleaning that I've done to this assembly, uh, I put a rag down to pick up any more fluid that falls out. A whole bunch of 10 millimeter bolts to take out. in there it looks a little rusted. It's probably a little stuck so we'll loosen that up. Looks like there's a tube in there that's holding this up so before I yank 
paint on that. I'm gonna see if I can undo that tube. This is the uh, I'm gonna take out right there. So let me see what I can do. So this guy right here, I had to go look it up. This guy right here is the in input speed sensor and it has a little wire um, wrapped in a, in a tube that comes back and plugs in behind the, uh, behind the valve body cover. So we're gonna have to pull the valve body cover off um, so that we can unhook that sensor so that we can pull this side cover off, um, pull the side cover off. So, which is just as well because mine was developing a, a slow leak anyway, so uh, this, this way forces me to put a new seal on it. So take, if you're doing this at home, take this cover off first so you can disconnect that speed sensor. Uh, if you're a chump like me, you do it out of order. So make note of the two, two bolts that are different than everybody else over here. You have one uh, for attaching one of your wire cable brackets and then there's one right here as well so the, so first one down from the right side and uh second one down on the left side This guy down here it then wraps all the way up around and then it plugs in right here. That's our input speed sensor wire. So very carefully we're going to So very carefully we're going to Remove him without breaking any plastic tabs, I hope. Right. There's another wire in the way here, so we're gonna pop him off too. Now, now, I don't actually, I didn't actually need to take the sensor off the bottom of the side cover. So I'm just going to put this screw back here so that I keep this all together. Yeah. So that we don't have trouble getting this back through, I'm going to put a string on this so that we can feed it back through when we're done easier. Okay, now we have a tether in there for when we want to run that back through later. The cover's off with its clutches. So here's the clutch pack that has the infamous 3.5 reverse wave plate in it. And uh, it's at the very bottom of this stack. Um, there is a, supposed to be a special tool to take this um, clip out. So there's a, a ring uh, that, that holds everything in. Um, but I believe we can do it with more basic tools. So. I'm going to give this a shot uh, on camera, uh, but I will err on the side of caution. If I cannot get this out, I'm going to take it down to the dealer and ask him to pull it for me. But 
I don't think that's going to be necessary. Here we go. No tool necessary. Now very carefully, so I want to take everything out in the same way it went in. Uh, so that when I put them back, it's all going to go exactly the same way, same face and everything. So I'm going to take these out and flip them upside down. And there's the old wave plate. No cracks. Guess that's a good thing. 108,000 miles on this car. Here's a new one. It's definitely probably won't show up on the camera, but oh shoot, it's all that. So uh, the new one is shot peened. It has a much um, lighter gray color. The old one is a darker gray. Mine has some interesting discoloration in the center. It almost looks like the the grooves were treated differently. So that's the part we're going to replace. I'm going to quickly check the other parts to make sure they all look okay. So the, the other plates all look very good. They all look nice and clean. So I'm going to put, put the new wave plate on and then put everything else back in place. Um, the wave plate, it's a stamped piece. So one side has sharper edges than the other side and uh, my understanding is that the smoother edges should go towards the rest of the clutch pack that way your sharp edges won't wear them wear them down so uh, so make sure when you when you do that you pay attention so my smooth edge is going to go down like that so I'm going to put it in like this All done. 3-5 reverse wave plate changed out.